Hello everybody watching at home, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today's Food For You Noodle we're going to be talking about why we are overly critical about high achievers and why we tend to reward the underachievers more. So, I remember when I was back in high school, you know, there used to be roughly two types of people. You'd have the people that would come to school all the time, generally the aeronautics people and the nerds, you know, um, that weren't really into sport as much, like the jocks. And they'd come to school all the time, they'd, you know, get A's most of the time on average. Just high performers, right? And I noticed that in general, because I was one of these people, I never wagged a day in my life. That's not to say I got A's and everything, but I strived. I strived. And I, you know, if I ever was late, or if I ever did anything wrong, I tended to cop a lot of punishment, a lot of criticism, even though I tried my hardest, and my average was better than a lot of people in terms of how much energy and commitment I was putting in and the results I was getting. Whenever I slipped up, I really felt it and I paid for it. Um, and then there were other people who wouldn't you know, come to school as much. They'd wag half the time. When they were in school, they wouldn't pay attention in class. They'd be disruptive, cause problems. They'd bully uh, a lot of Aborigines as well as white kids and you know, non-Aborigine. And basically, whenever these guys, you know, there was a system put in place um, basically, if these guys came to school like five days a week and didn't wag, they'd all get taken to McDonald's and they'd be shouted a free lunch. And I understand, you know, there are people that for whatever various circumstances they're in the situation they're in, and we cater to those individuals. We try to pr provide incentives so, uh, as to help them lift their game and, and change their ways out of, outside of their nasty unfair circumstances. I get that some people deserve special attention and treatment and incentives. But it's not just in the in school that I notice this, it's also in the workplace. Now whenever I've strived, you know, every job I, I do my hardest as a waiter or as a texture coder or whatever it is I'm doing, I try to be as fast as possible while being as effective and efficient. And generally a lot of the efforts get overlooked when I really think that, wow, I've, I've done a lot today, I've done everything, I haven't skipped any tasks in my job, I've done it all properly, not just quick, but properly and quick. And, you know, instead of getting any praise for doing everything really well and really fast and finishing early, I'll get criticized on one thing I forgot, you know, one thing I missed. And then I notice those that, you know, are half assed about their job and they don't really do everything. A lot of the tasks never get done by these people, they just ignore it you know, like balancing tables or cleaning tables. They'll just hang around the front or whatever and just take food and coffee and whatever else and everything outside, which the bosses don't see, they all ignore. You know, these people that are half ass and don't really put in their all and not the strongest work ethic, they tend to be, I don't know, they tend to get more shifts, uh, which to me is just, it's implicit that they're getting more praise and I hear them get more praise sometimes, you know, on the good jobs that they've done and it's just, it's just dynamic, you know, and I'm starting to think that like maybe when I start off a new job, instead of trying my best from the get-go and striving to perfect my game and master it, maybe it would be more beneficial, advantageous to lower my standard of performance, be really half assed and crap at my job, and then lift my game, and then maybe, maybe I'd get the recognition and appreciation and respect and the extra shifts that I think I deserve. You know what I mean? And it's really annoying. I don't understand this dynamic and I don't think it's just in school. I don't think it's just in the workplace. I think it's also in relationships in general and any kind of transaction. The, the more someone that, you know, the more someone has a better average at striving and doing their best and really committing and keeping up a good standard of performance, I think the more we take them for granted. And I think maybe, you know, it's not only that we don't recognize these people or pay due respect and look to criticize them. I think maybe we criticize them and we feel this way about them because we think that they are trying to be better than us, that they're arrogant, that they're trying to steal our, our light and prove themselves to be the best or whatever. Instead of just respecting that they're giving their best effort and maybe sometimes it happens to be better than us. And it doesn't mean that they're trying to be better. It doesn't mean it's arrogance or ego at work. It might just be that that's who they are and they put their passion and their heart into their work, you know. But I've noticed even at Hog's Breath, you know, the manager there would always be really picky with me. And it's not the only job I've had where because I've tried so hard, 
I think that they actually resented me. And that's the thing, they, you know, with this manager at Hogsbreath, she'd spend a lot of her time chatting um, with the waiters at the coffee section. And that would be the little area where people just stand at bay for a while and chat instead of doing shit they're supposed to be doing. And she was guilty of doing this too. A half past manager. So no wonder she felt threatened. No wonder she felt that maybe I was trying to upstage her when it wasn't even about her. You know, people would be very self-centered. I put my all into work because I'm getting paid to do that. And that's what I do. If I was a manager, I would be doing it doubly so. If that's possible, I already give it my best. So it's, it's really annoying in the workplace when you strive and you keep up a good standard. And then the half assed underachievers, when they finally bother one day to put in their effort, clap, 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 praise, praise, praise. It's really like, what's the point, you know? That's how it makes you feel. What's the point? What's the point in trying when, you know, so uh, I don't get it, like in, in terms of personal relationships, you know, you have abusive people, abusive boyfriends or girlfriends that are just real bitchy. And then, you know, whenever they do something sweet or nice, you know, or respectful, it's like they get more praise, you know, and it's like, oh, he's coming far, you know, he, he, he's, he does all this other stuff. But when he did this for me, it was so sweet and people really appreciate it more. And obviously it's because it contrasts, you know, the bitter and the sweet. If it's always bitter, then when you finally receive something sweet, or if it's always shit work and you finally see good work, you're going to be like, dude, awesome job, or baby, I love you. Whereas you have Mr. Nice Guy that always does the right thing, always helps out, always genuine, authentic, you know, just a good, wholesome partner. And if he does one bad thing or slips up, bang, he gets bit slapped to hell and beyond, you know? And they never forget that. They'll hold on to the bitter things, onto the, the mistakes, and let that override all of these good efforts and good contributions you've made over the years to the relationship or to the workplace. And I, I guess maybe that's what it comes down to is a contrast. You know, I think whatever we get used to, that becomes like an average. And we always take average for granted. It's only that which stands out, outstanding, that we take uh, heed of, that we notice and pay uh, due tribute and respect to. So maybe if you average good, and then when you finally do something bad, that is what is outstanding about you, is that bad thing or that mistake you made. If you're always bad and you do something good, then that's outstanding. And we tend to clap a lot, lot, a lot louder, or boo a lot louder, for outstanding performances. You know, instead of clapping or booing, for average performances. Yeah, that's my food for the thought today. It's more of a vent, really. Because, you know, I see people like in my various jobs I get getting twice as many hours. And I think that I put almost twice as much energy into it. And I wouldn't say I'm twice as good, but I do consider myself better in terms of I don't leave tasks undone. I do everything. And it might take me a little bit longer to get everything done, but it's because I'm doing everything. I'm not leaving anything out. Ah, it's frustrating. Anyway, that's my vent. That's my food for thought. Like, share, subscribe, and see you next time. Guys, thanks.